So today we're going to be cutting Libby's hair. She has a classic undercut with the sides in the back cut short, blended here in the center of the back, and then getting longer towards the front. So very, very, you know, popular classic kind of shape. So we're going to start taking what we've previously sectioned out, out, pin this up out of the way, and then I'm going to start here at the front, take a diagonal section, and then slowly work that way all the way to the back. Now I'm going to take this and the nape a lot tighter and a lot closer than I am here. I want to leave a little softness around the edges, around the ears, but in the back I want to take that pretty tight. So after I go through and cut as much as I can with my razor, then I'm going to go through with the thinning scissors and clean this up a little bit tighter through here, and then we'll get to the top and we'll razor that doing tip classic graduation technique where we're shorter in the back, getting longer in the front. I tend to like to take this section at the center of the recession to kind of balance out where the hair splits on the head. This gives me half of our transition area on the sides and half of the transition area going to the top. Once I get to the ear, I like to take that to an angle going down towards the occipital bone in the center of the back of the head. So I'm going right down to here. I'm going to start with an angle here. Pull the hair straight out from the head and then come in with a consistent razor stroke cutting on the inside of my finger going down. I'm not worried about how short it gets. I just want to be able to keep it consistent as I section from the front all the way to the back. I want a consistent cut, a consistent section size, and a consistent razor stroke. It leaves me less to clean up when I finish. Now the only real difficult part about this is that it's very difficult to see a guide because it's so short. So I'm not really trying to follow a guide as much as I'm trying to follow a consistent length from the head. So as I take the section, I'll comb it into the previous section and I'll see a little bit of guide here at the top. But as I start to go down, I don't see as much of a guide, so I want to measure from the root to where I'm cutting with the razor to try to keep it consistent. And since I'm cutting a really soft edge, it doesn't matter that it's perfectly perfect and smooth and seamless like you would if you were cutting with a scissor. There's my guide at the top. I'll start to follow that as I get closer to the nape. I just start following the guide length from the head. If I see inconsistencies, like I see a little bit here and there, I'm not worried about that right now. I can go back in and clean that up by going in and working horizontally to clean up any sort of length that may be off. Another thing that I can do is just sculpture cut right over top of the top layer of hair. 
This will take out any sort of inconsistent weight. I'm using very, very light pressure as I'm going through. and smoothing everything out. If I use too much pressure, I end up patching the poor girl. And then I gotta skin it. So very, very light. You don't wanna be patched, do you? No. No, okay, <laughs> all right, perfect. So now, to clean this up, just a little bit around the edges for any kind of long hair that may stick out that my neuroses would like to clean. I'll just go through and point cut that out. Now the key thing is I want to keep that soft kind of texture is I don't want to go through and just cut blunt lines. I want to keep my texture very, very soft. So to keep it soft, I will continue to point cut. That will give me a much softer shape and end result. This is just mostly most this is just mostly for around the edges around the front. I'm not worried about this right now. I'll get that after I cut the other side. So in order to fit this in a little tighter here in the nape, I'm going to bring out a weapon of mass destruction, the texturizing scissors. So this is going to allow me to go over and get the same, a similar texture, but I can get it really short and fit it in here where with the razor I have to have a certain amount of length in order to get that softness and it's hard to taper it in tighter. And I'm not, I'm not that good at it. So I'm going to use these. This is my crutch. So I'll start low, and I'm doing basically the same thing I would do is scissor over comb. The only difference is I'm using this, so it's going to cut a really, really soft line. And it will keep that similar kind of razor texture that I have going on in the longer lengths as it goes up towards the top of the head. And you can see already I'm starting to, to smooth that out and blend that in a little bit. Okay, <clears throat> now we're going to start cutting the top. So I want to split this off front to back. So the way I'll find that is I'm just going to take from her crown and a section that would go somewhere similar to the top of her ear. And that will separate the front of her head to the back of her head. So when I'm looking at this, the only thing I have to worry about is trying to get some sort of blend right here in the center of her head. I don't care if anything blends from there forward as long as that kind of blends. Straight down the center. Take a, a wee bit of hair on both sides. Triangle out a little bit in the center. Now I can cut this one of two ways. First way is I'll take and hold the hair out so that this section of hair right here is being held at that elevation. As long as the top section is at this elevation, then everything else will fall in order as it goes down to the nape. So I'll pull that out. I'll find my short piece here, however long I want that top piece, and then cut 
your angle into it. Come on, come on. There we go, going down. Be patient. Take your time. So now I've got just this center piece cut at a 45 degree angle, which is going to give me a nice kind of graduated stack. Another way I could do it is I could just hold the hair horizontally at the same elevation. Holding it at the same elevation and go through and cut it blunt. It will be more solid and heavier than if I held it vertical, but it will give you a very, very similar shape. So someone on finer hair that you want to see more weight, maybe cut it horizontally. If they have a lot of hair and I'm trying to, to distribute more weight and kind of soften it and make it more airy, then I'll cut it vertically. So, and I have the same choices here. I can either comb this out, continue my line over, or I can start to pivot like I would do in standard graduation. There's my line, there's my guide. I'm going from and going to real gently cut that over. Next piece held up at the correct elevation. Consistent razor stroke as I go over, comb that down, and we have a nice smooth kind of graduated shape. Same thing on the other side. Hold back into the center at the angle. There's where I'm going from, there's where I'm going to. My line underneath, consistent razor stroke. Cut that through. Last section held up. And just follow that through. Be patient. If I start to lose tension, go back, reassess. If I miss a little bit, clean it up. Cut that through. If I have a little bit heavier on one side, then I'll go back and take a wee bit more off. Make sure that it's balanced in length and in weight stacking. As I start to round up the head, remember the last section I held here. This section I'm going to hold here. All right. If I hold it higher than that, then I start to round my shape out. And I end up, instead of having this real strong kind of graduation, I end up with kind of a, a bubble kind of graduation. Just be mindful. If you're going for that, then, then elevate it all the way up if you want to round it out. If I want a solid, strong line, then keep it lower. Pivoting from the center out, not crossing the center of the back of the head when I hold this out. Making sure I get the right elevation. There's my line underneath. As I lay the razor against the head, I don't want to put any kind of pressure on the hair from the razor to try to cut it. The only thing that's cutting it is the movement not the pressure of the blade against the head. Now as I come into the sides, I want to make sure I'm using whatever part she's going to part from so that I can cut this side with this side, 
her heavy side with the heavy side. So I'm going to cut from the part right now. I'm going to start pivoting out of the center for the heavier side and just continue my line here. I want this to kind of tuck in right underneath the ear and not get too much longer from that. Just continue to pivot until I run out of hair. Now if I run into a spot where I don't really have a lot of hair, I'll just lay the razor against my finger and just cut it more horizontally like this. So now we got our basic shape into it. I want to put some more texture into this so that it's not quite so solid and blunt. So I want to put a lot more oomph and layering into it. So I'm going to start holding this horizontally and then texturizing through it. Pull a section out. Vertically going through. Taking some hair out. Now how much hair you're going to take out is going to be totally dependent on how much hair the person has and whatever your creative vision is. All right, so now we've got our finished shape. We've got quite a bit more texture to the top. Nice blend, short back, should be fairly clean. On the other side, if she wanted, she could take some of this, bring it over, get a tuck in nice behind the ear. But I kind of like everything brought over to the other side. Very nice. 